The literary piece that I chose to describe what's taking place in the 1990s is Jonathan Franzen's Corrections. Now, we've just covered David Brooks' Bobos in Paradise, and uh, uh, he's put forward, Brooks has put forward this idea that there's this new type of ruling elite in the United States in the 1990s and 2000 aughts. Uh, this individual whose um, social views, whose religious and theological views attend in a bohemian direction and whose economic views tend in a bourgeois direction, hence the combination of bohemian and bourgeois, the, the, the bobo. And he does an excellent job of telling us that this person wants to do good but also wants to live a very happy and material, um, materially enjoyable existence. To state that person in a thesis, I think, is, is one thing. To try to get a picture of how that person lives is another. And as I've mentioned uh, time and time again for our great authors who write these kind of decade-embracing novels like The Corrections, what they do so well is they, they capture the spirit of the age or they capture the spirit of a person in the age. So I'm not trying to say here that every individual living in the United States lived like the character in Franzen's Corrections, but what they're experiencing in this time is, is a common experience. So let's turn to the Lambert family, the family that Franzen gives us a fictional portrayal of. And let's turn uh, in particular to the person of Gary Lambert. When you read the beginning of the chapter and you see what Gary's life is like, uh, Franzen says something like the following. He says, uh, Gary very much enjoyed being able uh, to pick his private schooling options for his kids. He very much enjoyed his investment opportunities. He very much enjoyed being an individual who could choose a lot of things. But what he wasn't comfortable doing is choosing how his brain chemistry worked. So here we see that, that Franzen's character uh, Lambert uh, has to take a variety of different prescriptions uh, because he doesn't feel good. He doesn't feel healthy. Um, he's, he's off put by the world that he lives in, even though he's bohemian and even though he's bourgeois, even though he has a beautiful house outside of Philadelphia and a beautiful wife and children, even though he seems to have kind of made it, he's unhappy. So that's the problem identified by Franzen in the novel. But what is the, the solution that is offered, if, if any solution is offered? And I think the solution comes in just realizing why there's a problem in Gary's life that no drug is going to be able to take care of. Gary's upset with two sets of people. He's upset with his parents who live in Minnesota, and he's upset with his wife and his children. Not all of his children, but a couple of his children. What's wrong with his relationship with his parents? was parents have their older way of doing things. They're, they're company men, they're company people. Uh, they are your perfect Midwestern archetype. They do what they're told. And here Gary's trying to tell his father, don't do what you're told, actually make a decision that's in your best interest. So here Gary's argument is with the past, right? He's not nostalgic about the 1950s. He knew that change was needed. But when you look at the change that takes place within Gary's current family situation, his wife disrespects him. His wife treats him as a child. His wife uses uh, their children against him. The correction that's taken place familial, societally, between the 1950s and the 1990s has also upset Gary. So he's unhappy with the 1950s perfect nuclear family. He's also unhappy with the 1990s version of that family. Why is he unhappy? Because he believes that the 1950s took things in a direction too far uh, uh, toward uh, conservatism and tradition, but the 1990s have taken things too far in the opposite direction. What would be perfect is if you could have a middle space, a middling between these two positions, one that Gary can't find, one that Gary can't produce on his own. So he is in need of a correction that he can't prompt upon others because he's different from others. The lesson being, perhaps there is no correction that's at our disposal that can help us overcome differences that we have with other people.